This is not and will not be America's fight alone. Our job is to find enough common ground. Yeah, I'm a kid from Akron, Ohio. To make history. Why do success? I had no knowledge. I'm running for president. <laughs> I know. Last time we came out, no one was there. I know. It feels good. Thank you, thank you, thank you Everybody. very much. And welcome to the Huff Post Show. I am Roy Seekoff. This is Mark Lamont Hill. Yes. They love you. They love you. And we're I'll coming to you live from our LA studio. By the way, happy May Day, everybody. I see some communists out there. Yep. We got a great show for you tonight. Taryn Manning from Orange is the New Black is here. Yeah. Also, you guys watch Glee? Kevin McHale is here. Yeah. yeah. And of course, Patrice Cullors from Black Lives Matter, the co-founder of Black Lives Matter is here. Talking about all kinds of cool stuff. Give her a round of applause. Yeah. But first, uh, we want to kick things off with This Week In, This Week In. <laughs> yes, it's our look at some of the fanatics, fools, morons, and miscreants who caught our attention this week. That's right. First up, This Week In, supporting our troops. Congressional Republicans are attempting to block legislation that will protect members of the military from predatory loans. Because why should our troops be deprived of the chance to fall into crushing debt just like every other American? Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. What's going on here? It's like, I know the Republicans like to carry the water for Big Bank, but now they're throwing the water in the face of soldiers of all people. Yeah, yeah. Why? I, mean, I don't put anything by John Boehner and his crowd, but I got to tell you, this is a particularly nasty piece of business. Don't want to get into the weeds too much on this, but basically here's the thing. The Pentagon has been trying for 10 years to stop these predatory loans to military people, yeah. right? And they finally get it passed. Congress finally passes it, right? And now the Republicans want to roll it back and delay it a year. It's really despicable, particularly from these people who are always, you know, putting the flag pin on and waving the flag and saying, we support our troops. They are disgusting, terrible people. Can we agree on that? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. And this is what they do. They always sneak bills in. It's a national defense bill. It's something that's supposed to authorize defense of the country and defense of soldiers. And then in the fine print, they sneak in this thing about loans. And they do it because they know members of Congress don't read anything. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, but here's the update. Uh, the, the good news is there's good news and the bad news. The good news is it didn't get out of committee. They voted yeah. on it. And it was voted down 32 to 30. But it was still that close. There were still 32 people against it. The bad news is it's like one of those zombie bills, you know, kind of like The Walking Dead. And it could come back in two weeks when they vote on the whole bill. It's definitely going to come back because they like to pick. On, Republicans like to pick on the vulnerable. And soldiers are especially vulnerable. We don't think of them as vulnerable because they're so tough and strong. But they're also poor. They're underpaid. They're overworked. And you're like in Afghanistan somewhere. And then they bring you a, 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 a laptop and say, hey, wouldn't you like this laptop they dangle in front of you? Wouldn't you like to talk to your kids? All you have to do is sign the paperwork. And they give you a mafia-style interest rate of 300%. 300%. I know dope dealers in my neighborhood that had better interest <laughs> rates than that, man. Wait, wait. You've got dope dealers who give it to you on credit? That is... Like, moving on! Where moving do you on. live? Where do you live? I, I don't know what you're talking about. But, you know, but, Let's Mark, just strike all that from the record. But no, it, it's bad. Have you seen it? Yeah, you seen and the commercials? Yeah, I've seen the commercials. They're flag-waving. They also get the commanders who come in. But here's the thing. This is not just isolated to these banks. Hmm. You know, the big banks, uh, Citibank, J.P. Morgan, they were all just fined, and they had to do a settlement of over $123 million because they had illegal forfeits, forfeitures of the, of the mortgages that they were coming after for people who were off in Afghanistan and, and Iraq. Wow. It's despicable. I mean, for me, it's the height of hypocrisy that you ask people to say, go protect us from ISIS, but don't expect us to protect you from MasterCard or Visa. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, next up, we have this week in This Date Rapes for You. <laughs> Bud Light faced its second PR shitstorm in as many months when it released bottles with labels saying that it was, quote, the perfect beer for removing no from your vocabulary for the night. Yeah, this followed their St. Patrick's Day tweet, which encouraged Bud Light drinkers to pinch people who weren't hashtag up for whatever. At this point, Anheuser-Busch should just own it and change their slogan to Bud Light, the official beer of sexual assault. <laughs> We're light on calories and even lighter on consent. So, so Mark, yeah, yeah, here it was, Mark. Uh, this is bad. Yeah. So over St. Patrick's Day, they, they put out this like little rapey tweet and they get they get a little blowback from it. And then now, a month later, they do something ten times worse. You can't tell me that they don't know that they were doing this. 
they don't know that they were doing this. You're telling me that. You're telling me what I just said. Don't they, tell I was gonna say, they don't. The, the problem is we live, really? we live in a rape culture. And there are a lot of people on college campuses, on everyday situations, like on dates, or even like the media who don't know what rape is. They somehow don't understand what consent is. Uh, like a lot of guys brag about, I'll get her drunk and then I'll do what I want. We, we have our mind like that. They didn't know any better. Nobody's stupid enough to make a bottle label and put it out as a product that's rapey if you know... You know what I mean? That yeah, you're yeah. going to get in trouble but, like but, this. But I mean, like, you could say a tweet, oh, some intern did it. But this, how many people had to look at this to say, approve that label? This was on their product. I would say probably 5,000 people, all of whom had penises. <laughs> all of whom had penises. Oh, yeah. 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 That's so, the problem. They don't let... It's, just, it's the same thing happens when racist shit comes out, right? There's always 5,000 white guys in the room like, oh, it was fine. Look fine to me, Jim. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the same thing here. Uh, they have 14 men in the corporate executive area there. 14 male executives, one female executive. And from what I hear, she's not allowed at certain meetings. She doesn't get on the airplane with them. She's not part of the old boys network. So it doesn't surprise me that a group of men thought this was okay. But here's, the, boy here's, culture. here's the thing about Bud Light, though, in a company like Anheuser-Busch. They have to set the bar a little higher because we know that 50 percent of all sexual assaults involve alcohol, either, yeah. the, either the assailant, the victim, or both of them. So don't you think they have to go into the saying, wait a minute, let's be extra careful? You think that people who make beer for a living do research on sexual assault? Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but here's the thing that I do understand. I do understand why their whole theme here is to get the word no out of our vocabulary. Because when you offer somebody a Bud Light, that's the first thing they say. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. All right, last one. This week in Shut Up and Stick to Painting, former President George W. Bush delivered a speech criticizing President Obama's handling of the Middle East. He implied that pulling out of Iraq was a bad idea. George Bush gave the speech at the spring meeting of the Republican Jewish Coalition. But it turns out it was all a big mix-up. He intended to give the speech at the Republicans with Unbelievably Huge Balls Coalition. Yeah, yeah. I tried to be part of that group, but I... Uh, didn't make the cut. Didn't yeah, make the cut, yeah. I figured. You're like I've heard. the cut thing. I've, you, yeah, yeah. I, I've heard. Really no, yeah. All I'm saying is this. Is there anybody in the world who has less authority to talk shit about somebody's handling of the Middle East than George Bush? Uh, no. No, there's nobody. <laughs> like, maybe I, Osama bin Laden or yeah, something? Maybe yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's dead now, so he, Bush moved back up. Fair enough. But here's the thing. Remember, like, two weeks, I think it was, or two months before uh, he invaded Iraq, he didn't know that there was a difference between Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims. So this is not a guy who should be saying this. However, I kind of understand his, his point of view. He's kind Why of saying, that? he's saying, look, Obama, I understand there's like a presidential bro code. I'm not supposed to, you know, criticize you. But listen, fucking up the entire Middle East, that's my thing, you know? <laughs> Get your own damn legacy. Right. Yeah. No, that's a good point. But, but and to some extent, I think Obama did fuck up the Middle East. The thing is, when George Bush says it, we, it's like if Bill O'Reilly says something, we just assume it's wrong. Like, if George Bush says it, we, we think it's wrong. He's but not you, actually wrong. So you're saying that he, you're, you're blaming Obama for screwing up the Middle East? I mean, the Middle East was sufficiently fucked up before he got there. Right. But he doubled down on it. Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, like Libya, Sudan, Egypt, uh, Yemen, Somali. I mean, the Middle East is really jacked up right now, and he had a lot to do with it. So, so okay, Bush is right like a stop clock, you know, twice, yeah, twice a day. But, but he's wrong on the, on the substance of what he's saying because he's, he pointed to all the things you pointed to, right? Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, all these problems. Wow. But, but he said that... This president is constantly in retreat. Retreat? Yeah, we ain't I mean, retreat. If this is in retreat, I don't want to see what advancement is like. It's like, yeah. a, it's like a Michael Bay movie without the Victoria's Secrets models. <laughs> yeah. I, I, think the, I think it's an interesting point you make, though, because everything Bush is saying in, in terms of content is wrong, but because he's saying it, we're not listening to it. And so what happens is we just end up spending all our time making fun of George Bush, making fun of Dick Cheney. It's so much fun. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It, 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 the Correspondents Center, everybody, look, remember at the Correspondents Center, look at this. A few weeks ago, Dick Cheney says he thinks I'm the worst president of his lifetime. <laughs> Which is interesting because I think Dick Cheney is the worst president of my lifetime. <laughs> See what I mean? Yes. Presidential burn. Yeah, no, he burned him. <laughs> but that's what happened. So you, yeah. you end up spending all day laughing at Dick Cheney and George Bush, which is fun, and losing sight of the fact that the Middle East is still on fire. So he likes this. Obama likes this. Oh, he lo everybody loves when George Bush talks shit about him. Well, here, here, here for me is the bottom line. I think if Obama had done what he should have done when he first came into office and held these guys accountable, every time we had to hear a quote from Bush or Cheney, it would be rece preceded by... Former President, Vice Pres former Vice President Dick Cheney talking to you from his jail cell at the Hague. It would, you know, it would come in with a little bit more of that. That would have worked out better. Yeah, that would have worked out better. All right.
That is this weekend, and in honor of tomorrow's big fight, this is Dickopedia. <laughs> Dickopedia, a wiki of dicks. Today's entry, Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Money Mayweather Jr. is a professional boxer, a fight promoter, the world's highest paid athlete, and a dick. The current champion in five different weight divisions, many consider Mayweather the best pound-for-pound -pound boxer in the world. He is also a serial batterer of women, with a record of savage assaults that stretches back over 14 years and includes at least seven attacks on five different women. Mayweather's first recorded outside the ring bout occurred in 2001, when he unleashed a barrage of blows on Melissa Brim, the mother of his child, after smashing her jaw with a car door. This was ironic since, just one month earlier, he had dedicated his fight against Chico Corrales to all the battered women of the world and belittled his opponent for having assaulted his wife. Five months later, Mayweather again brutalized Miss Brem, dickishly asking a friend to hold his young daughter so he could more easily punch her mother in the neck. The six-month suspended sentence he received for domestic battery failed to make an impression, and Mayweather was soon charged with felony battery for repeatedly punching and kicking Josie Harris, the mother of his three other children. At his trial, Harris changed his story, testifying that Mayweather was, quote, like a teddy bear who would never put his hands on me. Unfortunately, a few years later, Mayweather did just that, pummeling Harris in front of their children warning them that he'd beat their asses too if they called the police. For this vicious attack, Mayweather finally spent time in jail, a whole two months, before being released for good behavior. This good behavior apparently did not include contrition. Despite Mayweather's multiple convictions, he claims, in true dick style, that all domestic abuse charges against him are just hearsay and allegations. But Mayweather's dick behavior is not confined to beating the shit out of women. He also views them as possessions, on par with the fancy cars he collects, suggesting that just as some people keep multiple cars, he should be able to have multiple women. If you're able to take care of 20, then you should have 20. Mayweather's unquestionable flair for being a dick was on full display in his treatment of former fiance Chantel Jackson in the wake of their breakup. First, he posted unflattering pictures of her on Instagram, dickishly claiming they were taken before a round of plastic surgery he'd paid for. He also posted a sonogram image he said was of twin fetuses Jackson had aborted. Then, demonstrating a level of cluelessness rare even among Hall of Fame dicks, he told an interviewer, your private life should be private. Yet, despite all evidence to the contrary, Mayweather insists, I don't hate on people. Some people say I'm an asshole, but I don't hurt nobody. A succession of battered women would likely beg to differ. So. No matter what his one loss record is when he finally hangs up his gloves, the judge's final decision will be unanimous. Floyd Money Mayweather will forever and always be a world champion dick. What's up, baby? I'm living a life. Wow. Wow. You're not going to watch the fight, are you? No, no, I'm boycotting. Okay, boycott. No pay per view there, right? No, absolutely not. All right, absolutely. All right it's time for our panel. Yes. Yeah. She. <laughs> Yeah, panels are good. <laughs> she plays the badly behaved inmate Pensatucky in the series Orange is the New Black, and she also stars in the new Lifetime movie, Cleveland Abduction. Give it up for Taryn Manning. Yeah. <laughs> and she is one of the creators of Black Lives Matter and a Los Angeles-based artist and organizer. I'm talking about Patrice Colors. Patrice, welcome. <laughs> All right, now, there were a lot of compelling stories grabbing the interests of HuffPost readers this week, none more so, obviously, than the protests in Baltimore over the death of 25-year-old Freddie Gray, who died earlier this month from a spinal cord injury sustained while he was in police custody. Baltimore State's attorney Marilyn Mosby announced today that Gray's death had been ruled a homicide and the police officers involved had been arrested and charged with crimes ranging from murder to manslaughter to assault. Now, Patrice, uh, Mosby said that we were finally going to get some justice. Uh, do you think that the protests, and not just the Baltimore protests, but the protests that we saw in Ferguson and the protests that we saw after Eric Garner made a difference in how this was handled? Most definitely. I think the protesters since August 9th have been out in the streets every single day across the country. Um, New York, Los Angeles, places like Grand Rapids, Michigan, Appalachia. I mean, literally, the whole entire country has been fighting for the lives of young black folks. 
Wow. And, and that's powerful. And I think some people don't appreciate that there's a connection between protesting, putting a spotlight on stuff, and getting justice. Sometimes. Like, if we didn't say anything, I don't think anything. Do you think anything would have happened? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think something would have happened just, just you know, by, like, the, the people alone. But I like to say that they've been more, like, fighting for, like, peace, you know? I don't, I don't think, I think saying the word fighting for, for justice is, like, I think it's, it's more like they're, like, protesting for some peace. Like, I've seen some, like, some evolved behaviors with this, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And while the Mosby announcement struck a blow for accountability, it didn't seem like the cable networks always focused on the reason people were marching. Instead, they were having a conversation on what to call the people who were marching. Take a look at this. Look at this. Uh -huh. These are supporters of uh, Mr. Gray. Protesters are on the move again. Demonstrators vowing to shut down the city. This is an uprising. Rioting today in the streets of Baltimore. Definitely a riot situation. Riot. These are criminals. Criminals. Criminals uh, and thugs. Thugs. Isn't it the right word? Just call them niggers. Wow. So, so we went right. from protesters to demonstrators to criminals to thugs to the N-word. I mean, the American dream, it's still alive. You can really, uh, you know, reach that goal. I mean, <laughs> I, I, the way this, the media framed this, even, even calling people who are engaged, engaged in what I call an uprising right. as thugs, what, what does it mean for that to happen? Why does that happen? Because I think the media doesn't want to actually talk about what's happening. <laughs> mm. The media doesn't want to discuss law enforcement violence. The media doesn't want to discuss that someone was murdered by law enforcement. You know, some people say killed because you can't use murder because if it's a murder, then you've been convicted. But it's murder. And we have to call it as such. And the media doesn't want to do that. And so instead, they focus on sensationalizing what's happening on TV. Now like, they've lost control. Exactly. They've lost control of the situation. Yep. Too, and they're, you know, so it's all about the thugs or the this, you know? Yeah. It, it seemed, though, that there was this obsession with the property. That's what, the, you know, it became like, a C CBS! Mark, Mark CBS is gone, man! Right. You know, I mean, it's like almost... you can't make another one. Right, exactly, exactly. It was, it was almost like that became, they wanted to start a hashtag like, What the fuck was CNN. in the CBS that yeah. y'all couldn't get another yeah. one? I, 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 I think they wanted their own hashtag, you know, hashtag white people's property matters. You know, it, well, it didn't yes. take off. It, it yes. wasn't trending. Well, someone, something came out on social media, which was beautiful, which is, I'm not concerned with broken windows. I'm concerned with broken necks. Yeah. And yeah. that's like, do we remember what happened to Freddie Gray? His yeah. neck was broken. I think, How did that yeah. happen? I think y'all being too hard on white people. <laughs> white people, if you're watching, I love you. <laughs> this is why I hired him, because he's a very generous soul. <laughs> yes, yes. No, I'm just saying, when white people riot and do crazy stuff, the media... They're celebrating. <laughs> no, I disagree. The media represents white people the same way. I'll prove it. Look. That's true. Let's see. <laughs> Patriots fans, they're savoring victory. Fans celebrating the Giants' win. Rally fans outside the Staples Center. Hundreds of Penn State students held a rally tonight. The U.S. Open of Surfing, a skate and surf event. Off-campus party that also coincided with the annual Pumpkin Festival. Oh, the Pumpkin the Festival. The Pumpkin, pumpkin Festival. Festival! How amazing is that? <laughs> so that, that was a rally. You know? Yeah, but if it was... It was a rally, not yeah, a riot. It was a team one, right? The, right. right. Shit, they rally when it's... That's what I want to say. I understand black people riot when they lose. Right. You know what I mean? Like, true. like you know, you lose right. some money on the game. I think they, White people won. <laughs> and they still turned over police cars and set shit on fire. I don't even understand They're this. They're celebrating, homie. They're celebrating. They're celebrating, right. <laughs> do, you, do you think, though, it's just a racial component? Because the interesting thing is, I know that we know that some of the cops involved with the Freddie Gray uh, uh, assault were black yep. or were Latinos. Yep. Um, and so, do you think it's just a racial thing, or, or is the color, the blue I, line, as we talk I about. I have a theory. Um, I think it was a little personal. Hmm. You know what I mean? Hmm. I think this kid's been, you know, he, has a, he had a little bit of a record, like 22 arrests. And um, as far as my research is go, yeah. and um, I think there's like a little personal thing there. Like they're kind of tired of his, his little, you know, smaller territory. But it yeah. seems like this is it's this Oh, you think like they knew who he was yeah, and they yeah, were just giving yeah. him a hard time with it. That's interesting. Yeah. But it's actually, this constant rouse thing, you know, 8.30 in the morning, you've got a switchblade, no you don't, right, you know. Right, but I actually agree with that point. Um, because I grew up in a neighborhood where we knew our local law enforcement and they picked on the community yeah. and they picked on the community. And I think that's an important understanding. And he also that, tried to ride away. Exactly. You know, so that, that actually the law, the law enforcement that's coming in the community is, is there all the time. Mm -hmm. So they get used to faces, mm -hmm. they get used to names and there's ex the excuses they make around who is, who they're going to target and who they're going to not target. But I do think the point around, is it, um, you know, does it matter if an officer is of color? I actually think it doesn't matter. Once you put, once you suit up, you are blue. That's a whole brotherhood. That's, that's, that's a whole nother thing that we don't know about. Yeah. It's kind of like, 
it's the, it's what Eric Garner said. I mean, uh, when they came and were and were hassling him about the loose cigarettes, yes. he said, "Not today." Exactly. Not right. today. Exactly. So you know, it's just this history yes. of again and again and yep. again it happening. Yeah. Exactly. You know? Over yeah. really petty crimes. Yep. And they say you shouldn't run, but when you run, they catch you and beat you. When you stay, well, you run, you get shot. Walter Scott. Right. Walter Scott was running. Yeah. There was no contact. I mean, literally, it was like really simple. The officer just picked up his gun and shot him. Right. It was like. And he did it like he did it before. Exactly. That wasn't like the his first time. So you're saying that he didn't actually break his own neck? No. <laughs> that's what they're saying. Right. That's yeah. what they're, I mean, that's I know exactly what I read on the yeah. websites exactly there, right? The yeah, you know, you know, like that 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 was awful because that, that man was, you know, was a big big gentleman, and, and the guy that you know that killed him was little. And you just think exactly. the rage of the, exactly. he saw red and he was screaming, he couldn't breathe, mm -hmm. and there was just like. I don't know. It's insane. It's, it's that, absolutely... That one, that one killed. Like. I, and, 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 I, and I think you're right. And I wish we talked more about that. I wish we were, were talking more <laughs> about what you're talking about. Yeah. But instead, a lot of times the right will take a story. It's not just the right. It's really just media in general. Exactly. Will take a story and pick out the stupidest part of it and yeah. focus on the worst part of it. Do you, you all saw the mother, for example. I hope that was... Who, who, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? This mother who pulled her son out of the riot. Just... Now, I thought the conversation... <laughs> and if y'all didn't see it, look at Can we bring it up? She was pulling her son out of the riot. She was, she was a little rough. You know, regular mama stuff. Oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, my mom did that when I put too much sugar in the Kool-Aid, but, you know, like, when, when this happened, run that one more time, because I really want people to understand this. This mother was clearly hurting, right? Exactly. She yeah. was upset, and she was like, I don't want you killed by the like, police. Please. I, yes, yeah. I'm trying to save you. But they, you. But no one right. said, yo, this mother is so impassioned to protect her son that she did this. Instead, they said, wow, if more black moms did yep. this, nobody would be in jail. All we need to do is get a bunch of black women to beat up boys, and we'd right. be fine. Where the daddies at? I mean, it's, it was like the stupidest it conversation. Terrible. And then your homie, uh, Bill Crystal, you see his tweet? Oh, yeah, yeah. Bill, Bill Crystal put up a, a tweet. You remember him? He brought us Sarah Palin, among many other... <laughs> other great uh, ideas, yeah. He, he, he said that the GOP message in 2016 should be running against anarchy and chaos. Black people. Right, uh, exactly. And, right. And fear of right. a black planet. Right. You know, Chuck right. D coming back. And look at this. His dream team is Giuliani and Cheney. That's frightening. Yeah. Oh. That actually makes me really scared. Right. Yeah. So basically, right. it's the scared. Southern strategy that Nixon started in 68, right? Scare white people, uh, you know, even poor white people, right. uh, yeah. uh, about the coming black menace. I yes. mean, what does that kind of say to you when this is what it's all distilled down to, Taryn? Oh, man, that's... Uh, that's a big question. I don't know. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still Do you think people are really shocked. scared? Right. Well, let me ask you, do you think people are really scared? I mean, th does, this, yeah, does this kind of stuff work? Like, when you see, like, when Americans, in, th we fly over in places like Pennsylvania, right? <laughs> right. You know, I'm from, I'm from Pennsylvania, like, that middle part between Philly and Pittsburgh, we used to call it Pennsylvania. Yeah. And those are the people who watch Baltimore or Ferguson, and sometimes that's their only view of black people. Does that get them really scared? Um, I don't know about scared. It just, it just adds to the, you know, the racism, and, like, it, it just doesn't, there's no time. There's like no room for for that 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 situation to change, you know, yeah. because it's just feeding it. Yes. I don't know about scared. Just yeah. more pissed, mm -hmm. more bl easier to blame, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know. Trish, I want to ask you one thing. I know that there's a new, it's a big day of action tomorrow yes. uh, planned, and it's actually being, there's a new hashtag. Black Spring. Black Spring. Yes. So I know there's been some controversy, Mark, you know, uh, we were talking yeah. about this before. I, yes, what's I was the, hoping this was going to come Lay it on us. What is, talk to us what Black Spring is. Yeah. I mean, Black Spring is really about looking at this moment as not these isolated incidences. Like, the media really wants to say, well, this happened in Ferguson, this happened in Baltimore, this happened in New York. Are they the same? Right. Yes, they're the same. Black people are not a monolithic group, but what we are facing is something that's extreme, and that's poverty, that's homelessness, that's high rates of joblessness, that's law enforcement invading our communities day in and day out. And we, we are uprising. And so this Black Spring is about really talking about um, a national uprising, and we should be we should be honored to be a part of this moment. Yeah, and that's connected to the idea of Arab Spring a few years I ago guess it in is. Libya and Egypt, yes. obviously, and even Iran. All these places were sort mm -hmm. of uh, pushing back and fighting for freedom at the same time. Some people don't like that term. Yes. Why, why no, is I that? Just... Uh, and I just found this out today. I did way. too. <laughs> okay. So I'm still learning the argument. Okay. Um, some people say that it didn't come up from the grassroots. Mm. that it actually was a, a term put on them. So Black Lives Matter came from the grassroots, yeah. right? So that's not a term that was put on us. So folks are sort of arguing that actually don't use something that wasn't created by the, the grassroots, right. but we're saying we are the grassroots. Right. So we're, we're reclaiming that word. Oh. So if somebody wants to learn more about what's happening tomorrow, where can they go to find out more information? FergusonAction.com. Uh, if you are going to be doing an action, you should put it up on FergusonAction.com. There will be
be in action tomorrow in Los Angeles. I'm not going to say the place because I don't want the cops to show up early. Oh, but, uh, oh, yeah. That's the only time they show up early. <laughs> <laughs> we'll whisper it to you later. Yeah. 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 But show up and we'll have all that for you. Yeah. Uh, also, can we, I want to move on to another topic because this is a big week in sports as well. Some sports fans here? Yeah. Yes. So, so I know you all saw the uh, NFL draft. No, no big surprises here. Jameis Winston was the number one pick uh, in the draft. And tomorrow, of course, is the big fight between Manny Pacquiao and somebody. Some Pacquiao fans, I guess after the Dickopedia segment, everybody's a Pacquiao fan. <laughs> Nobody's rocking with Mayweather anymore. But Mayweather, again, has a long and ugly history of beating women up. And Winston, who we just talked about, is being sued for allegedly raping a woman when he was a student at FSU. Yet both of these men are being lauded as sort of heroes, and they're about to get paid more money than most people have in an entire lifetime, than many countries have in a whole in an entire lifetime. What does it mean that, that these men who are kind of bad guys are, are so celebrated? Um, I think money, number mm. one. Um, I think um, I think we need to, in their defense, you know, I, and the only defense is that they're in a very aggressive sport. It's con con constant, you know, training and this and that. I did say earlier, like maybe these people should automatically hey, have to go watching. through like Don't forget to um, anger to our management or so, somehow like videos. maybe a little meditation. And make sure to catch new something, episodes you know, Friday something at 9 that balances on out, um, balances out, you know, the, their their sport, which is is a very aggressive nature that they're amazing at. Yeah. What so, you so the Dalai Lama comes in <laughs> at halftime. Right? Instead of the coach going, we're going to kill him. We're going to rip him apart. He comes in Not and they like do a little. Not like but you know, we are. No, but, you know. That is an interesting idea, though, right? That you spent your whole life being told that you're fundamental worth is as somebody, as a purveyor of violence. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's, I, that's not to excuse that's, their behavior, but. Yes. I mean, I actually agree with that point if we're looking at people's psychology, right? Yeah. You, you are what you eat, you are what you do. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think there's a larger context, which is patriarchy, mm. uh, which allows for men to do really terrible things and bounce back, and women cannot do those things and bounce back. Their yeah, careers will be over. Oh, exactly. that's interesting. But it, it's interesting that we are able to somehow divide. I heard a lot of the conversation today. It's like sort of there's the boxer and then there's the man. You know, root right. for the boxer, hate the man. But isn't it right. really on us, the people who are paying? What is it? I'm, I'm not doing it. What is it for a pay-per-view? Eighty-nine ninety-five or something? It's like, Probably like hundred bucks. It's, it's, it's going to make something know. like uh, three hundred million dollars. Easy. Yeah. Yeah, so how do we divide that? I mean, it's sort of the question is, you know, Picasso was a horrible misogynist, but I love his art. But is that the same for a boxer or for a football player? Of course, it's entertainment. People love their entertainers. People would do anything for their entertainers. I mean, dare I say Bill Cosby? Ah. R. Kelly. <laughs> I mean, R. Kelly. I mean, there's all these people who are their, who are their art, yeah. and then they do these terrible things, but we don't want to let go of the, of the thing we've created, right? Of the image we've created. But I think it's really particular to men, too. I don't want to yeah. stop on that point, right? Women can't do the same things and jump back. I think it's interesting because the media, I think, also plays a huge role in this. Uh, for instance, when Mayweather got out of jail, uh, some of the stories that were written about it, here's one that the AP had where they said that he d they described what he had done as a scuffle with his girlfriend. That's so now, first of all, first of all, <laughs> yeah. as we saw in the video, <laughs> exactly. it's the mother of his children, and he beat the shit out of her. Right. The police report said he punched her, and he kicked her, and he hit her in the back of the head because he knew it wouldn't leave a mark. Right. But they're calling it a scuffle. Right. So is it right. just, is it what with, you with, said, Jerry? Right. Yeah. Is it what right. you said? He's a professional <laughs> right. <He> scuffles. <laughs> right. Pacquiao's not going to scuffle with her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. nobody scuffles with yeah. her. And, and the fact, and the fact that they frame it that way is, to your point, I, I wonder if we have an investment. To your point, like I wonder if we have they're an investment. Scared of him. At, well, they're scared of him, but also <laughs> I think they want to believe that he's not. This of course. Person. Or they just know the economic part of it. Yeah. You know, before he went to jail, the judge said, "Okay, you can delay going to jail until your next fight because right. it brings in so it. much money exactly. to Vegas." I want to watch it. Is that right? <laughs> oh, because he wanted to see it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he had money on the fight. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're about to ask me about the the violence, like. Um, because I want to say something about it. Ugh, I forget. I think he's a sociopath. I mean, the way that he was, the car, if I can have 20, I don't right. know. I just don't think he's maybe, I mean, how many times has he been hitting his head? Well, well, you know, I think that's most men, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, I, I think that's most I mean, men. I, like I think if most men, you know, could have 20 partners, gay or straight, I think many people, I think patriarchy feeds all of us to want that. He just happens to be with somebody who can afford it. Right. Yeah, but, but I think I mean, really, I, I, for I me, it he, says that he frames it as a possession. And I know your new movie is based on the Cleveland abduction, the Ariel Castro. Yeah. Uh, that's coming on, it's coming on uh, tomorrow. And in a way, I'm not yeah. saying it's the same thing, but it's sort of a continuum mm -hmm. that you look at women as a possession yep. and he thinks, well, why shouldn't I just be able to pluck them off the street, yep. chain them to the bed and keep them? That's, they're my possession. I mean, he said, if I can take care of them, why not? As he if also, that's all women need to 
be taken yeah. care of right. by a man. Right. I mean, it's just like really clear where his sentiment. And then Castro. Right. Takes but I'm saying that's the all. That's, so. that's most boys. Yeah, he's a he's a musician, and uh, the, you know, some of the band asked him like, uh, "You seem so happy, man. What's been going on?" He's like, uh, "Sex on a shelf." Wow. You know, wow. like I'm, you, you know what I mean? Like like just. That's sick. Yeah. And, and I think with Winston, it's it's sort of a similar, it's an interesting mm -hmm. thing. We let this moral equivalency happen, right? So, you know, he allegedly, yeah. uh, you know, he's being right. sued for, for uh, assaulting a woman, sexually right. assaulting a woman. And then they always talk about that this other thing, which makes it a character issue, stole some crab legs. Right. Right. And they always talk about they're the same thing, right? It's, right? it's the sexual thing, but the crab legs. The man stole crab legs. They can't get over that. So Cocktail sauce, <laughs> crab legs, uh, it upsets the people. I think, um, I think, so, I will say this, I think that the, the term sexual legs. assault and rape has been a little bit overused where it's kind of not at times potentially taken seriously. Mm -hmm. You what know? do you mean? Say more about that. I mean, if I could just say something really quick on on the set of Hustle and Flow, there was a huge thing that went down. Um, um, two two people were like framed by like some women. Um, they it went in there voluntarily to to have sex in the trailer. Not not any of the stars, but I'm um, next. Thing you know that the ladies are running out in the nude, screaming rape. You know, and it's just, and it, but it was consensual. You know, so I just feel like I don't know. Sometimes things can get a little bit misconstrued or, you know. I just feel like most of the time women don't lie about that. No, 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 not saying they're yeah. lying. It's just, yeah. you know. You think yeah. it was a setup? Uh, yeah. But, but, and look yeah. At, uh, but Jameis, uh, I don't know if you saw this yesterday, after he was picked number one by the Bucks, he uh, posted this on Instagram. Oh, he's with crab legs. Fascinating. Now, don't you think that is sort of an arrogant move on oh, his definitely. part going, yeah. hey, now yeah. that I got 60 yeah. million, now that I'm, you know, number one guy, I'm going to just put this right in your face. Hey, remember this? Crab legs. That's, See, I disagree. That's awesome. That's awesome. I disagree. First of all, can you put that up again? Those are some good motherfucking crab legs. Did you see how? <laughs> you see how much meat? I would brag. I put that shit on my Instagram right now with the butter oh, yes. and everything. But, but beyond that, this man probably made... 30 or 40 million dollars for a university and didn't get paid one dollar if he had broken his leg last year mm. He would have been empty broken back in the projects He would have been anybody else nobody in most people's minds and the school would have kept every bit of their 30 or 40 million dollars And the fact that he had to steal crab legs out of a path mark while making 40 million dollars for somebody He should put both middle fingers up and eat as many <laughs> motherfucking crab legs as he wants that's, that's how I look at it Defending Jameis Winston stealing the crab legs. No, I'm defending a system that of makes course. you have to steal crab legs. Right. How can you be worth $40 million to somebody and you got to go into a... He didn't even get good crab legs. He had to go to Pathmark, <laughs> the local supermarket, and get them frozen crab legs. What about right. what he did? What about what he did? Okay, it, it's time for our, our next guest to join us. Uh, Does he have crab legs? Uh, we'll find out. <laughs> I need some crab you legs. You know him as Artie, otherwise known as the guy in the wheelchair on Glee, oh. for six seasons. Oh, now he's really? starring in Boy Choir, along with Dustin Hoffman, and he hosts his own radio show called Sick of My Own Voice. He's Kevin McHale. Let's hear it for him. Yeah. Kevin! I don't have crab legs. Here it is. I don't have crab legs. No crab legs. Right. Right, one over here. Okay. Uh, Sir. Sorry, I don't have crab legs. Sir. It's okay, man. Yeah, I'm so heated. Then Ackroyd bought whiskey. Do you, do you have time. anything? Uh, cocktail sauce, tartar Then Ackroyd bought vodka last nothing. week. Fish sticks, a little, uh, a whaler. <laughs> yeah, something. It's okay. I have it's nothing. Okay. I'm sorry. Now, I, I, I got to, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel a little bit like one of those old uh, television evangelists. Like, you're healed. <laughs> yeah. you, you walked out here. So the yeah. whole wheelchair thing, uh, <laughs> acting? Very good acting. Yeah. That's what yes. it is. Yeah. I, had, I had a woman. I thought that was done. I thought people knew, and I had a woman for the first time in a while, she came up to take a picture with me, she's like, she stopped, and I was like, what's going on? She's like, what happened to the wheelchair? <laughs> and I was like, are you That's kidding like, me? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, still? We well, obviously really danced on a couple of the episodes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, but, but did, you get, did you ever get shit from disabled actors saying, hey, man, you took our role. That's, that's bullshit. You know, what oh, the, wow. you know what the thing was? That became a thing for about a day. <laughs> that did that did happen, and it wasn't from actors in wheelchairs. I felt like it was people speaking on behalf of disabled people and what they oh, thought they'd want them to hear. Because I had so many actors and um, people in wheelchairs actually reach out to me through Twitter or through agents and managers or whatever, and said nothing but great things. Mm. And oh. I just let it happen. You know, I I resigned to the fact that this it's not about me playing the character. People are happy that this character is being represented on. Television, Correct. period, and I think that's all. As, as actors, I feel we're all way. representing somebody at some point, yeah. so it's, it's we're never playing ourselves. I feel the same way as a black person. Thank you. 
I, I don't you didn't need, like yeah. it when I got I the black eye roll. Yeah, I don't need black eye. As long as you're black face, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same yeah. Sense. No, no, no. Right. I, did, 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 you never felt any guilt about it, though? I'm not saying you should, but did you feel any guilt about it? I'm not saying you should. No, I, I, I'm, I'm happy. No, I, 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 I love you. Just throw it out there. No, just throw it out there. No, because no, some people, look. I have a friend in a wheelchair. It's like, this is some bullshit. Yeah, I know. I... For a minute there, I, I felt terrible. Yeah. I was like, oh, what the hell? I was like, maybe I should. But you know, like, I was broke. I was <laughs> I did like, good in my audition. Try, trying good. to be, I was like, I got a job. <laughs> right. Like, I wasn't right. thinking that far ahead. Yeah. I was Fair like, enough. I'm just trying to get employment. And then if they're mad at me, but at least I got the job. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. And, and in your job, you've worked with some amazing people. You work with Dustin Hoffman, which is a big yeah. deal. Yeah. It was incredible. That was just very strange. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't know how I got here. Um, I mean, I was scared because I had heard stories about how he's like method and yeah. and his character he plays in the, in the film is boy choir. Boy choir. Yeah, he's not a a very nice person. And so I was expecting the worst, and I was already intimidated because you know he's kind of known. <laughs> he's only won a couple Oscars, uh, and he was the nicest nicest man on the planet. I imagine when you're... It's our rumors get stuck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I imagine somebody like that who has had that career and maybe knows he has that reputation, he came into the room and made sure everybody was comfortable and would just tell stories. And, and he came in talking about like classical pianists and all this. I was like... Really? He just made me feel dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh -huh, yeah. Now, what about Kathy Bates? Oh, Kathy Bates was... The same thing. Horrible, right? Terrible person. Terrible. At least Dustin's... Untalented. Like... <laughs> I'm gonna cry. No, it was, it was the <laughs> exact same situation. Because luckily, it didn't happen all on the same day. It was like I was working with Dustin for a couple weeks and then Kathy came and it was just... It was just great. She was so good. And the weird thing is, like, hearing them talk about past films and things, like, oh, yeah, on Misery. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, like, what are you talking about? The thing that I always love, though, so is wrong. that, you know, <laughs> it turns out that Hoffman, Hackman, and Duvall, <clears throat> they all lived together yes, for a while would, down yeah. there in the village. What? Yeah, and we'd hear stories right? like that. And the most Oscar winners wow. ever in one, yeah. one room. It's pretty amazing. And, it was know, a crazy thing they're where they're all growing up together, and Pacino was around there as well, and exactly. they would all take, like, different acting classes and... It's like, well, you all suck, so I'm, glad, I'm happy to work out for you. Did you have stories you could share? Like, you know, hey, let me tell you about the time. I was trying not to talk at all. He went up to me, he's so like, I've never seen Glee. He's like, no, no, it's fine. You don't need to see Glee. No, no, no. No, you don't need to watch it. That's all right. Speaking of, uh, speak, no, I've been hearing rumors on the internet. Did you hear these? Yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been checking it out. Yeah, yeah, so is it true we're hearing on our sources, you know, yeah. we're, we're un incredibly connected here. Yeah. Um, Spinoff, Leah Michelle, Glee. Oh. I, I don't I don't think so. No Glee spinoff. I don't I, I you know towards the end um, there weren't that many people watching Glee. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how many people would then watch a spinoff. Oh no. <laughs> you know. So when did when we're did, off the air for a reason? When did it, <laughs> when we're did, tired of doing when, it? <laughs> Kevin, when did it jump the shark in your mind? <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> Which season? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, I will say, um, not to bring it down or anything, I, when um, Corey Monty died, yeah. the show, I don't think the show ever came back from okay. that. And uh. I don't, it wasn't for a lack of trying, but the story was going in one direction with this character, and he was, um, you know, one of two main characters yeah. in the show. And so I think after that, just the vibe on set is different. Um, I think the willingness to... It was just weird for us being there, never mind actually filming and having to... Being one of the writers in that sort of situation, I wouldn't know what I would have done because I was like, I don't even really want to be here, never mind having to think of storylines revolving around these characters anymore. Now, Glee was always on the forefront of LGBT issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether it was, uh, you know, Coach Beast transitioning, yeah. uh, the Tran Choir. Yeah. Um, and this was a very big week for LGBT news. Yeah. First of all, we had, of course, the Supreme Court, uh, you know, hearing uh, the, on the gay marriage issue. Uh, and then there was, of course, the watershed moment for the trans community, Bruce Jenner yeah. making the announcement, shockingly, that he was a Republican. <laughs> uh, yeah. And yeah. then, you know, there was other, other stories happening along those same oh, lines, right? It's very, very, very gay week. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, in the, in the best way, best way you, you guys saw the Ted Cruz thing? Yeah. Ted Cruz gave this talk uh, yeah. or this speech uh, at a hotel owned by two <laughs> gay men yeah. who apparently didn't know that Ted Cruz was anti-gay and was against gay marriage and wanted a constitutional amendment to end gay marriage. They say they didn't know. But they're Republicans. Right. Well, that... That's they the, just assume that? Right. Well, they hear, well some be, gay people... I'm kidding, I mean, some I'm Republicans. Kidding. No, no, no. It, it raises this interesting issue for, for, for me is that if you... What if... These are tough times for a gay Republican. 
I mean, what if you what if you believe everything that Ted Cruz believes except the gay marriage issue? Um, is it is it a single issue thing? Is there automatically that's the black ball? You can't you can't vote for him just because of that one issue. I have friends who are gay and Republican. Exactly. Yeah, and I have, <laughs> especially in this town, <laughs> I've, I've, <laughs> I've come to meet a lot of them. I was like, huh? <laughs> and I've gotten that response. Like, I'm not a one-issue voter. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. And a lot of the times, it's not, it, I feel like they're misinformed and they don't really know anything. They're upset that they have to pay taxes, period. Right. And it's like that thing. Well, the this. man was like, but do you well, guys know that that that, that man asked um, him asked Ted, you know, if your daughter was was um, came out and said, Dad, I'm, I'm a lesbian, how how would you accept that? He's like, I would accept my daughter, and and I and I felt like that was like some growth, mm. right? You know, if you keep just making it an, an, an issue, then it's going to be an issue. But I thought that was kind of kind of nice to hear. It's nice. It's just, and I think you're right. It's just such a low bar, right? I accept yeah, my daughter. We're like applauding someone for like right. not kicking their kid out of right. the house. Yeah. I still don't want her to get married. Don't want her to have health care. Don't want her, you know, just, yeah. but you can, you can come to Thanksgiving. Like, right. it's, it's, it's right. also trying to raise money. It's like the amount of times he's said the complete opposite about other people's children. Mm. Right. No, it, I, and it's I, like, I know, I know. it's like, okay, well, you're pandering now because you need the money. So it's like, yeah. But it's also, he got all the blowback. Also, it's kind of like, what did his advance team? They didn't know that this was a, <laughs> a hotel where there was like incredible orgies right. going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Ted, it's going to be good for you. you oh, know? Right. Yeah. This, was, this wasn't just a regular gay hotel. This wasn't just a hotel owned by gay people. I mean, no, these guys like own the Fire Island oh, party scene, right? right. Yeah. Like you're going to the gayest place on right. earth. Yeah. Isn't it called like Out? Out yeah, yeah, it's called, called out. out. Yeah. It's called out. There's something, something about that. No, that was the sound. It, it's interesting, though, because, the, the, you know, these 2016 candidates are having to tie themselves up in knots. You know, the questions you asked, right? That sort of they said, Marco Rubio, would you go to a gay friend's wedding? Well, I would go to the wedding, but I wouldn't give them something from their, you know, the right gift. Yeah. Uh, I'd give them towels, you know, not the thing they want or something. You know, so do you think it would be easier for them if they finally, if the Supreme Court turned over the ban and they didn't have to deal with it? Or would it be like Roe v. Wade, Patrice, where now on the states that you had got, it gets harder and harder, right? Roe v. Wade is the law of the land, but you can't get an abortion in Mississippi, you know? I think it'd be like Roe v. Wade. And I think that, you know, I, I, I don't actually think that it matters. Your sexuality doesn't predicate your actual politics. Wow. Like, exactly like he said, yeah. gay fo lots of gay folks are... Republican, lots of gay white folks are racist. So that doesn't, just whoever you sleep with doesn't actually matter based off of your own politics and how you understand race and gender and things like that. So. Talk about the log cabin. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think, you know, the, even the conversation around gay marriage is really complicated. There's queer folks that are like, I'm actually, gay marriage is not what I'm aspiring to. Mm. I'm aspiring to equality. There are gay black folks that are on the front line saying, actually, let's be talking about law enforcement violence mm. and not necessarily gay marriage. This is not sort of the, the one thing that if we get it, we're now all free as, as queer people. So I think it's complicated and I think this country is moving in a, uh, away from sort of the ideologies around homophobia and things like that. And the Republican Party is trying to figure out what to hold on to. Mm. They're really trying to figure out what to hold on to right now. If this was their platform, but that's not going to get them to win. They have to change their platform. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you put like Laverne Cox on the cover of Time. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's that was pretty pretty epic. So yeah, I think we're moving toward. You said something, but it's very complicated, you know. Mm -hmm. Now we, you're on Orange Is the New Black, which shows lots of representations of sexual identity yeah. and sexuality. I mean, I, it's one of my favorite parts of the show. Is that yeah. it's not it's not complicated. <laughs> no, no, not like that. Like that. <laughs> Freaks. <laughs> Tell us more, Mark. That, yes. that was season what? one. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I moved past that now. No, but there's all these interesting relations around sexuality. Obviously, Glee may be one of the gayest shows ever. Yeah. Right? And sure. It was, like, amazing when it came out. For, no, it, for, it, it's amazing. Uh, Do you two find yourself now being representatives of LGBT <laughs> issues just because you're on these two shows? I mean, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I would ask a lot more about it if I wasn't, yeah. I suppose. Right. Uh, that's probably about it. About right. Just asked a lot about it. Yeah. Opinions. I've never had it, uh, like a big angle on it until I saw it. Until actually I met Laverne, really. Because she, she's like a public speaker and she's very, you know. She's amazing. She's amazing. You can learn a lot from her. And we would all sit around and just be like, so, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> the, the answers are, our minds would be blown just to know what, kind of how complicated it all is. But did you have to go through any kind of like 
training? Did they bring in this? I feel like I need some. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> like there's like it's like isn't it like LGBT? And then there's a new. There's, there's a, Q, a lot of Q's in there. Like curious. There's the Q. I, yeah. I, I throws me off. Yeah. <laughs> but, but like for instance, <laughs> when you you know when, when you had to deal with some of these storylines, yeah. and it does get complicated. Yeah. I mean, like Bruce Jenner wants to be called he for now. I mean, it becomes the question that becomes you know that yeah. well, no, it's true. And so. <laughs> Did you, like, for instance, uh, on the, what did you make of the Bruce Jenner uh, special last week? Um, I thought it was great. What, what, my favorite thing about it was, and in terms of me not getting training for questions like that, <laughs> is about, I feel like he isn't necessarily a spokesperson right. for it. He is a real person mm. transitioning, right. and he's dealing with it as it comes. Right. And I was learning from him mm. when they were asking, like, what are the correct pronouns to use, like, if your family says, he's like, there's no wrong answer. Mm. And I feel like, the biggest thing from that interview is teaching people like me and the rest of America that it's okay to not know what you're supposed to say, but you can deal with that in a respectful way mm -hmm. and ask someone. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's a right way to go about doing it, and he's still figuring it out, and everybody else is going to figure it out, too. Absolutely. I got to ask you, before you go, I got some Orange is New Black questions. I'm, I, <laughs> yeah. He's a huge fan. I'm no, 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 no. When I, we found that you were coming on, I was he was so like, sad. oh! <laughs> No, I, I love it. I, I'm just a little nervous, right? Because the, the the show was based on Piper's story. Mm -hmm. She was only in jail for like four days, right? <laughs> and now we're on like season three. Four days, right, right. Like season one was based on her story. Season two was kind of her story. And then it moved into some other stuff. Like what's going to happen in season three? Like how are y'all writing that? Um, you know, it's, it's um, I feel like... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm allowed to say. No, no, it's uh, you know, I think I think Taylor, uh, it's, you know, that Kit Piper is a catalyst to get us into that world, you know, and and also and then just sort of like the journey in that world. But who's to say that the how many seasons we run isn't that year and a half, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so what kind of can you give us a, a hint? Because I know the show starts in June, a new season. Yeah. yeah. Just give me for some you, hints? buddy, there's more girl scenes in the show. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right. Now, and tomorrow night, the, the movie on Lifetime, yes. uh, Cleveland Abduction, uh, I've been reading about it. Now, it says that this is a very, very different movie from a usual Lifetime movie. Yeah. It's been called Brutal. <laughs> it's, it's been called Gruesome. It's been, yeah. called, it's been called Award Worthy. Can you tell wow. us a little bit about, were you afraid of the subject matter? Did you feel like this was something that you maybe wanted to walk around gingerly? Uh, I mean, walk around gingerly once before I took the role. Yeah, when you so first were questioning it, before you met Michelle, I know you yeah. play Michelle and you spend a lot of time with her. Yeah, um, yeah, gingerly only because of my mom, who I share everything with, was like, I don't want you doing that. And I was like, what? You know, that was like, she's like the first call I make when I get a role. It's so excited. And, it, and then she kind of like was a buzzkill. But then I understand, <laughs> like they can be. But, but no, I love my mom. But no, fair Did enough. She hit you like, like the woman. <laughs> oh, yeah, she you. went, <laughs> What are you talking about? Get off the set. Um, she was just nervous. I think it was just more about how brutal. That, I mean, this actual story is, you know, I don't really even have the words to, to say, articulate sort of um, what these women went through, mm -hmm. you know, and this monster of a, of a person. Who, who also was extremely abused as a growing up, and you know, it's just, it's a pattern. Yep. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. And it's an amazing project, and, and, I, and I'm thrilled to watch you in it, because mm -hmm. I, I, your, your acting chops seem to continue to grow so much. Mm -hmm. I wonder, though, about the next role you're going to take, because I've seen you <laughs> play a, a prostitute, I've seen you play a prisoner, and I've seen you play <laughs> someone abused. Uh, someone abused. Down, I know. So, I'm noticing a pattern here. Um, yeah. is, are you, are you it's actively... called stereotyping. <laughs> I Hollywood. Gonna, I was going to say, is, is this part of like them putting you in a box, or do you deliberately like to find roles that are sort of challenging and dangerous and speak to these issues? Um, well, you know, I have a lot of friends that are actors. Um, I've definitely been stereotyped, typecast, put in a box, what have you know. <laughs> you, the box. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it's one of those things where, like, in my in my 20s, I used to try to fight against that ser stereotype and be like, but I, I feel like I'm kind of cute. How come I never get to read for the pretty girl? Mm. And Because I'm not, I'm not, in, in Hollywood eyes, I'm not that girl. No, it's fine. Then I realized, <laughs> then I realized, um, then, then I finally came to realize that I get to play, like, uh, very... Uh, roles with, with a lot of depth. Yeah. Just because you're troubled or you're a prostitute doesn't mean that you're not a, um, someone that's been through stuff. You're not wise and you're not, you know, have common sense and you're not yourself aware. I like the roles I play. I think it's fun. But I did make a promise that I'm tired of dying in movies. <laughs> no more death. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know what? I ain't trying to
going to die. We, we, we promise we will not kill you here. So please, how about some applause for them? Join us. Thank you. Now, you can get more information about Black Lives Matter by checking out Patrice Cullors' website, patricecullors.com. Be sure to see Kevin McHale in Boy Choir and yes. listen to his radio show. Yes. And, of course, Darren Manning, Orange is the New Black, and the movie premiering on Lifetime tomorrow. Let's give it to him. Yeah. All right. Those were some of the stories that are alive and kicking this week. But now it's time to pay tribute to a story no longer with us. This is like the, the beginning of the new world. Today will be another one of those moments in time, a moment that will forever change the course of music history. I tell you, Mark, I, I hate it when billionaires get the raw end of the deal. It's, yeah. it's so sad. It hurts. It's so it sad. All right, before we let you guys go, we want to do our part to make your weekend just a little bit better. That's right. We want to help ensure that you're well prepared and able to be part of any conversation. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick lightning round of party prep. We're going to check out the Huff Post. We're going to give you a ready-made take that you can use should any of these stories come up around the weekend. All right, so here's the first headline. Grind this. A North Dakota lawmaker with a record of anti-gay voting was outed after sending pictures of his penis to a man on Grinder. Mark, what does uh, somebody say if this story comes up? This comes up at a party. It's what you say. You say, yeah, it turns out he's not against all gay people. Just gay people who aren't online, located within a six-block radius, and totally ready to party. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you got to say. Work. That works. All right, next up, Unhappy Gilmore. Native American extras walked off the set of the new Adam Sandler movie over what they claimed were offensive depictions of their people. Roy, what do I say? You say, you know, this might be a record. People walking out of an Adam Sandler movie before it's even made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's new. Like, it's, it's, it's happening. It's a new one. Okay, Supreme Court waivers on gay marriage. Justice Kennedy claims that when it comes to defining marriage, quote, it's very difficult for the court to say, oh, we know better. Mark? Wow. Um, you say, wait a second. Isn't saying we know better exactly what the Supreme Court is supposed to do? Otherwise, we just play rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. yeah. Ready? Gay, gay marriage. One, two, three. The tie. tie. Hey, what do they get to do? Exactly. Yeah. All right. Brother, can you spare an egg? A new study reveals that the Great Recession led to a major drop in the birth rate of women ages 20 to 29. Sir? Yes, you say, I find that very surprising because all the millennials I know never stop talking about how their generation is always getting fucked. <laughs> so then you would have babies, you say? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, those were our takes. We'd love to hear any of yours, so just tweet them to us with the hashtag HPShowTakes. And listen, we really do want this to be a two-way conversation. So please, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and as always, swipe right on Tinder. That's right. Join us in thanking Patrice Powers, Karen Manning, Kevin McHale. And we got Ted Cruz, Floyd Mayweather, Jay-Z, Bud Light, and all the other newsmakers who made this such an interesting week. Good night, Good night everybody. everybody. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click here for more videos. And make sure to catch new episodes Friday at 9 p.m. on HuffingtonPost.com.